Hello and welcome, my name is Florian Marcus. Uh, by popular demand, we will explore one of the most requested services from the Estonia Asia Trade Agency. Uh, whether you are a small, medium or large company, or maybe even an individual consumer, due diligence is necessary for any potential business transaction. Conducting a proper due diligence on a potential business partner is a well-known elementary practice. However, the routine task can prove to be more challenging in complex international markets. In March 2021, Ernst & Young Policy Lab in the Baltics published a report showing exactly that correlation. The further you go in distance, the more difficult due diligence becomes. However, as it often happens, the best trade opportunities present themselves exactly in those far regions, also for Estonian companies, where opportunities emerge primarily in countries across Asia. China adds further difficulty to the issue. Uh, on the one hand, you cannot get by with English in China as easily as you might be able to in most European countries. Calls, uh, emails and messages can often be unclear or even entirely incomprehensible. On the other hand, China and its economy are so big that looking for credible references of potential partners through known contacts is in most cases an impossible task. This is why we need a structured approach. In this video, we will cover some of the basics of conducting well-thought-out and structured due diligence. Given the size of China, the person you think you are talking to might be very likely an impersonator or a fraudster. The same applies for companies themselves. In Shanghai alone, its Chamber of Commerce has millions of members, often with very similar names. We have to be mindful of the temptation for companies to pretend to be someone else. Our database of inquiries shows that Estonian firms are concerned with finding reliable information about the company and people they plan to interact with. All of these tools allow you to gather information about the three main areas of concern that we have identified in our database of inquiries. Can I trust this person or is there a reason to be suspicious? Can I trust the company or are there any red flags? And how are the financials of this company? Don't let yourself be daunted by the multiplicity of tools and their names. Baidu, Chichacha, WeChat. We use these tools because they are effective and because the Chinese themselves use them as well. But let's dive into two case studies. The names and specifics have been anonymized, but these situations are based on real life events. An Estonian client company was contacted by a Chinese person allegedly belonging to company X. They proposed a purchase. Using the tools, we can find out that, first of all, Company X exists. Second, Company X has good financials. And third, the business license of the Company X shows a business scope corresponding to the proposed purchase opportunity. Also, Company X is based in Province A. A further research of the person who contacted us shows that the person lived in another province 900 kilometers away from the company's location. This, coupled with the fact that they sent the inquiry from their personal email instead of the company domain, does raise some suspicions. We decide to further verify the individual. We requested them to send an email from the official email account of the company X. We obtained the domain name during our due diligence using the tools that we outlined above. After this inquiry, the person never called or emailed again, so you can imagine what happened. So let's move to the second case study. Company B from Estonia has been in the market for quite some time now and has received an offer to do business with Chinese company Z. Our due diligence shows the following. Number one, the Chinese company Z exists. Number two, the company has no reported legal or payment issues. Also, the person who contacted us is indeed the legal representative of that Chinese company. The cell phone number, picture, email and address of the contact person match that of the legal representative. The business scope of Company Z is in the same area as that of the Estonian company. And the main shareholder of the company is the person who contacted us. So everything seems perfectly legitimate for now. However, upon further inspection, we found out that this Chinese company was established only a week before they contacted us. It hadn't even existed for a month. This is an example of a serious red flag that requires further investigation indeed. We will now run a demonstration of using the platform Chichacha. You have been told to search the company marked in blue. You can do this even if you cannot read or speak Chinese. The Google Translate function is very good at translating this website. 
All you need to do is copy and paste the company name into the ChiChaCha platform search bar. After you do that, we have all the information on the company displayed here that this platform can provide. This is about financial, tax credit, shareholder, contact information and much, much more. Here we can also see that this company in China is in fact a subsidiary of an Estonian company. How do we know this? Well, by taking a look at the name of the legal representative, which says Joel Tim here, which looks familiar to us. Additionally, the business scope of this company sounds very familiar to us as well. Multimodal transport and transport agency. This you can see on the right side of the screen right here. The establishment of this company is marked as July 2019 in the district of Longhua in the province of Guangdong. This is the subsidiary of an Estonian company in China. The Estonian company in China has a Chinese name and we have found all of its records in China. The same way we found all the records about the Estonian company in China, we can find the records of any company in China. Just like in our first example from before, we can already see how it is possible to cross-reference information such as the location of the company with another platform that has info on the person who contacted you and might live 900 kilometers away. Here we look at the risks associated with the company. You can see that there is no reported risk associated with their legal representation, nor is there any history of risk or consumer complaints. If, however, there was some risk here, then that would not necessarily be a problem. It would just require further investigation. For instance, big firms might have ongoing legal cases that contribute to the risk factor. But it does not necessarily mean that the firm is not credible. It does just mean that the due diligence that you are conducting will give you an overview of the risks that it is facing and that allows you to investigate these situations further. Finally, we can also find the necessary information about the shareholders of the company, including the ultimate shareholder, relationships between shareholders, if there is any cross-shareholding with other companies, and much, much more. For instance, in our earlier case study, we found out that one Mr. Cho is holding 20% of the shares, making him a majority shareholder. However, if you are to investigate further, you can find that other shareholders are companies where the majority shareholder is Mrs. Tsan. With this new information, it is apparent that Mr. Cho is in fact not the majority shareholder. It is actually Mrs. Tsang, and she has many troubles with legal issues. This makes the company you're looking at a bit less appealing. There are also other tools available to use to find out more about the person that you wish to do business with in China. One of these tools is the popular social media platform WeChat, which allows you to legally gather some useful information about the person that you are dealing with. Whilst there is a natural inclination to compare Western social media culture to that of Asia, this is simply not true or appropriate, and it could lead to potential problems. For instance, not having a WeChat account is already a major red flag. And any Chinese person that does not give you access to their WeChat account must be met with caution, as it is standard practice in China. Effective due diligence also means knowing the standard practices in a particular country. So if this video was interesting to you and you would like to gain a better understanding of how to conduct in-depth due diligence in a country, look out for our quarterly workshop on the Enterprise Estonia website and on our social media channels linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.